Okay, great. First stand up. Everybody turn and look. Hey, okay, all right, okay. We're going to make sure that she's known and welcome to the to the family here at uh, Sour Road. Okay, let's buy for a word of prayer and then we'll begin. Our Father in Heaven, we're so thankful for all the blessings that you provide us each day of our lives. We're especially thankful for this opportunity that we come here in the now being in the comforts of this building. Uh, we, we thank you for all that you do for us. We're, we're thankful even for the rain and the, the, even the sunshine that comes after the rain. And we, we thank you for just blessing each one of us for our safety that we've um, had during the storm. And we know that there's some in, in, uh, uh, in the church family that are not able to attend because of uh, being, because of power outage and other reasons. But we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that those of us are here have, and we pray that everything may go well this morning. Father, we pray that you would continue to be with Teresa as uh, she is just trying to get to all of her numbers uh, where she can uh, get at least, a little, at least a little bit more comfortable than what she is. We also pray that you'd be with Haley as a new member in Christ. We pray that we could be a good example for her and, and she could be a good example to us the way that uh, she, and she begins her Christian walk. Father, thank you so much for the love that you have for each one of us and help us always to look to you for the, uh, our guidance and for our strength in everything that we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Terrence. First thing will be 43. 43. We say um, abbreviated verses just for due to circumstances. So we'll say verses 1 and 3. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, virgins of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my
scripture reading this morning comes from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 through 10. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward, he was looking forward to a city that has foundation, whose designer and builder is God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this time that we've had, or we have to come here uh, without fear of harassment to worship you and to hear a portion of your word. Be with us now. Help us to set aside um, all what's going on today with the weather and uh, power outages and stuff like that. And concentrate on the lesson that will be presented to us here shortly. Well, we're thankful for this church and this church family here. We pray now for those that were mentioned just a moment ago, uh, those that are in the hospital, uh, be with the doctors and nurses that we'll see after them, and uh, be with uh, the, those that have just uh, obeyed your word and uh, have been baptized. Uh, be with them and be with all of us as we uh, help them out in any way that they need it. Be with us now as we continue this hour of worship. Help us to concentrate on solely you and worshiping you. All these things we ask in your son's name. Amen. Our invitation of song um, will be. M696, M696. Once you get that mark, the final selection will be hymn number 424. 424. Let us stand. We'll say all three verses. As I travel through the dark with this trouble and strife,
Good morning. It's good to see all, you all here. I know there's probably some more that are, that are online with us this, this morning. They got the news kind of late that the power was restored, and uh, maybe they had other things that were keeping them here, uh, keeping them away this morning. But uh, we're glad you're all here. We have a good attendance here today. And want to say once again, Happy Father's Day to all the, all the dads out there. Because it was Father's Day, I, I thought I would gear our lesson towards one specific man. And this man, he is a father really to us all in one way. Uh, he is the father of the faithful. He is someone that when we look back in the scripture, we see so many lessons uh, that he showed us in his life that I think we could learn from today. Uh, and lessons that I think will be applicable to our life today. And so today, we're going to talk about that father, the faithful. We're going to talk about Abraham. And when I think about the life of Abraham, like I said before, there are many lessons that Abraham teaches us. There are many things that Abraham has, uh, that he did in his life that I think uh, we can learn from that were good, that were positive. There were also several things that he did that were not so good. Uh, We can learn from them as well. And that's something that I think we're going to see today. If weather uh, cooperates and power and everything else goes our way, we will uh, have the first part of the lesson this morning. And then this afternoon or this evening, we will have the rest of that if the Lord wills, uh, if that uh, is our opportunity. And so as we look at the father of the faithful this morning, one of the first lessons I I think we see in the life of Abraham is that he walked by faith. You heard there in the scripture reading this morning that how it was by faith that he went to that land, that land that had been promised to him. Now we read about about that first in Genesis chapter 12, starting there in verse one. And it says, now the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And when you hear about that, I I don't know what your immediate response is, but I know what mine is. That sounds kind of scary. That sounds a bit intimidating. See, here he is, and he's in a land that he is very comfortable with. He's in a land that he has been in for at least some time now. And now he is being told that he's going to leave his father's house, that he's going to go to a land that God is going to show him. And I think we all can identify with the fact that that might be a little bit intimidating. And yet, Abram, he leaves. He leaves because of his faith in God. He leaves because of who God is, what God has done, what God is going to do. He's going to leave his father's house and he is going to go to this land that he was going to be shown by God. He walks by faith. Now God tells him there in verse two, he says, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And I think this was a a very big encouragement of why Abram is going to trust in God and he's going to leave. God is going to bless him over and over again if Abram will walk by faith. You know, that's something when we think about God, God has blessed us over and over again. And we can read about in scripture that in Christ, in Christ are all those spiritual blessings, but we have to be people that are in Christ. We have to continue to walk that walk of faith as we read about in 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. And so like Abram, we need to be people that day in and day out, no matter what it comes in front of us, no matter storm, power outages, you know, temptations, whatever comes our way, we need to be people that walk by faith. And so in verse 4 we read, So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. 75 years old. Here he is. Can you imagine 75 years? Uh, You know, a lot of people, they'll spend their entire life in one location. And here he is at 75 years old, and this is when he's setting out on a very big adventure. His life is going to be changed forever, but the Lord is going to be with him. The Lord is going to, uh, to bless him. So it says that Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. And so at the end of that verse, this, so they came to that land of Canaan. You know, that's going to be the land that's going to be the promised land for all these people. That's going to be the land, be the promised land of God's chosen people. But how did it start? How did it become that land? Well, first, Abraham had to leave. He had to set off on that journey. He had to walk by faith. And that's the same thing for you and I today. 
Maybe there's people here today that you have not yet started walking with God. Well, the thing is, is as we begin our walk with God and as we continue that walk with God, we are going to be blessed in Christ Jesus. And it wasn't just a blessing for Abram. It wasn't just a blessing for Sarai. It was going to be a blessing for so many generations. And it says that in verse six, and Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were there in the land. You know, he had obstacles, but he walked by faith. He had task he had to over things he had to overcome but he continued to walk by faith Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 9 uh and we're talking in reference to abraham says by faith he dwelt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob their heirs with him of the same promise now why did he do that why did he do that because he had faith in god he believed and so today i want us to first ask ourselves have we began our walk of faith with God? And right now, are we walking, are we living by faith? Hebrews eleven six 6 says, but, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is rewarder of those that diligently seek him. If we're walking by faith today, we must be people that are diligently seeking after God. So Abram, first and foremost, I think teaches us to walk by faith. But something I think else that Abram teaches us today is that we must be people that worship and honor God. You know, I want us to notice something about Abram as he went about his life in various places he went, and this was not just true to Abraham. This is gonna be true to uh, several of his descendants. But notice this, what Abram does as he comes to certain places uh, within his journey. You go to Genesis chapter 12, there in verse seven, it says, "'Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, "'To your descendants, I will give this land and it says, and there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. Now, numerous times over again, you're gonna see this stopping and this building of altars uh, that is going to be a way of him to worship and to honor God, to show his devotion and commitment to him. And that's something that I think uh, has dr driven us here this morning, not literally talking about cars, but it has brought us here today that we have come here today to do what? To worship and honor God. But I'll say this, especially in, the, in reference to honoring God. Do, do you know what I mean? Don't we honor, honor God every single day? Can't we show honor and reverence to God each and every day? Yes, the, the Lord's people come together on the first day of the week. But I guarantee you that's not the only day you pray. And I guarantee it's not the only day you, maybe even you sing. And I hope it's not the only day that you read, read your Bible. And I hope it's not the only day that you choose to live for him. Abram chose within his life and as he went about things in his life, that his life was going to be about worshiping and honoring God. He repeats the same thing in Genesis 12 and verse eight. It says, and he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel and he pitched his tent with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. So here we see just a, a beginning of this, but it's a pattern that's been established in the life of Abraham that he was going to be someone that was going to worship someone that was going to honor God. And so that brings us to ask some questions about ourselves. How does our life compare to the life of Abraham? No, we're not telling you to go out there and build a physical altar today. No, we're not telling you to go out and, and, and find a place where you're gonna uh, pitch a tent outside uh, and build a stone altar, you know, that's going to, uh, to worship and to honor God. That's not part of the New Testament covenant but your life and my life can honor God each and every day by the things we do, by the things we say, by the way that we live our life, and by gathering with the Lord's people to worship and honor our God. Our lives need to be a living service to God, but we also need to offer up our worship to God continuously. John 4, starting there in verse 23 and 24, talks about our worship uh, in referencing from Jesus to, the, to that, that woman from Samaria, and he says, but the hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. I think this is a lesson that Abraham didn't even, even know that he knew that we need to worship God. He was someone that showed a worship-like attitude, our, our, our willingness to worship God at all times. But the same is true for us today in the, in the New Testament covenant. We need to be people that are willing and ready to go to God and worship. 
And that worshiping uh, to God needs to be done, as verse 24 says, needs to be done in spirit and in truth. But I want us to go back to verse 23 and see something that's very special here. It says, the hour of coming and now is when the true worshipers. See, there is a way and there is an ability to offer up false worship to God. There is a, a way to offer up vain worship before God. But God is seeking after people that are going to be true worshipers of him. In fact, that's what he goes on to say. It says, we'll worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. A great lesson that we can learn from our Father of the faithful is that we need to be people that worship and honor God. God's seeking after people that are going to worship him. He wants people. He desires people. He commands for people to worship and honor him. And so like Abraham, let us all grow in our worship and our honoring of God, whether it's in our daily service, whether it's in our worship before him, we need to be people that worship and honor God. Now, this next lesson that I think we're going to learn from Abraham is not one of the positive lessons. It was going to be definitely one of the negative lessons that I think that we're going to see in the life of Abraham. And that is the lesson of telling the truth. Now, when you look at the life of Abraham, Abraham is seen as his father of the faithful, and he is. And Abraham represents a faith, and you know, before probably other people knew what faith was, but Abraham is sitting here, and he's going to have a period of his life where it's really a couple of different times where he's going to come up with a scheme. He's going to come up with a plan that where he's not going to tell the truth. Now, for all the little kids here, and, our, and really all of us, telling the truth is of utmost importance, and it's something that needs to be done in our life. When you come to Genesis chapter 12, starting there in verse 10, it says this uh, about Abraham and Sarah. It says, now there was a famine in the land and Abram went down to Egypt to dwell there for the famine was severe in the land. And it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarah, his wife, indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful countenance. Therefore, it would happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, this is, his wa- uh, this is his wife and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say that you are my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake, and that that I may live because of you. See, here he's going into a a land because of a great famine. And I think if if you've read about other parts of our world, uh, and even the United States at times, there have been periods of famine that have even happened in our own country, talking about the Dust Bowl and various other things that have happened. But this is a time of great, you know, stress and great anxiety, but... He does not have to respond with anxiety by telling this lie. Now, here was something that uh, is, uh, needs to, to be noted that, you know, they have a familial, uh, you know, a relationship as well. So the, uh, I can't remember the exact relationship. I'll look that up for you later. But there is a relationship here that Abram, Abram is. I believe it's his half-sister, is Sarai. Uh, but you look at something here that... Here they are as husband and wife going to a land. And as they enter into this land, the lie that's going to be told is, this is my sister. Or maybe some would say, this is just my sister. Well, that wasn't the whole truth. That wasn't the complete, honest, you know, truth that they were telling there. They were telling a lie uh, because really and truly this was his wife. Now, you might think, well, okay, well, what, what harm is this going to do? Well, let's read about that. You go on down to verse uh, 15, it says, And the princes of the Pharaohs also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. Now, why was she taken to Pharaoh's house? Well, she's taken to Pharaoh's house because they think that she is a single woman that's available to be taken. And so they take her to Pharaoh's house. Uh, and it, go, it goes on uh, down to verse 16, it says, He treated Abram well for her sake. He had sheep and oxen, male donkeys, male and female servants, female donkeys and camels. But the Lord plagued Pharaoh in his house with great plagues because of Sarah, Abram's wife. So here we see that this was not something that was good for, to happen here with Sarah. Sarah had been taken to Pharaoh's house, and there's no telling what transpired while in that house. But here she is, she's taken, even though she is another man's wife, to be with someone else. This was not pleasing and honorable before God, and God is going to plague uh, Pharaoh and his house with these great plagues. In verse 18, it says, And the Pharaoh called Abram and said, What is this you have done to me? Why did you not tell me that she was your wife? And why did you say she is my sister? I might have taken her as my wife. Now, therefore, here is your wife. Take her and go your way. 
So Pharaoh commanded his men concerning him. So they sent him away with his wife and all that he had. This was a lesson that Abram had to learn. Telling the truth was of utmost importance. And when we speak falsely, those falsehoods impact other people. Here, in this case, that, that false speaking impacted Pharaoh and his household and those in, the, in, in probably that immediate surrounding area. That was something that when we look at the words we use and the things that we say, we need to understand just how great impact they're going to have on other people. And so when we speak falsely, it can hurt other people. When we tell lies, it could cause damage or destruction to happen all around us. I think one of the lessons that we can learn from the life of, of Abram or Abraham is that we need to be people that not only walk with God daily, but walk with God always. And by walking with God always, I mean we need to be people that are telling the truth. The truth is something that we read about in the New Testament is something that we, that we see that sets us free, talking about in reference towards the Word of God. It's something that we, we should grab hold of and hold as, as cherished in our lives as Christians. We should cherish the truth. But I'm not talking about just cherishing the truth as the Word of God. We should cherish honesty. In fact, when Jesus talked about telling the truth, he taught, let your yes be yes and your no, no. That seems pretty simple. It seems pretty cut and dry. We as Christians need to be people that need to tell the truth, the gospel, but also tell the truth and letting our yes be yes and our no, no. This is a lesson I think we can learn from the life of Abraham. One verse that really stuck out to me that I wanted to reference this morning in reference to this is Proverbs 12 and verse 22. And it says, lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. And I think of most of Abraham's life, I think he was a delight to the Lord. God blessed him over and over again. God chose him. God let, let him be a great leader of many generations. And through his seed, all the, gen all the generations of the earth were going to be blessed. But that didn't mean that Abraham was perfect. That didn't mean that he never messed up. That didn't mean that Abraham never sinned. He was a man. And that's one lesson that I try to teach my own kids, and I hope you try to teach your children as, as well. Sometimes, even we adults, we mess up and we sin. And so I, when I look at the life of Abraham, this father of the faithful, I want to see him in his entirety and see that he was a man he was a man that walked with God. He was a man that worshiped and honored God, but he was a man that sometimes that he messed up and he made the wrong decision. But that wasn't his whole story. That wasn't his whole life. Abraham wasn't just defined by this one moment. In fact, he continued on and he pressed on. And that's the last lesson I want us to mention this morning is that Abraham, he focused on what's important. And I think on a day like today, I think that might be a lesson that we all need to hear. You see, I, I bet over the last few days, at least some, if not most of you, have probably lost power. You might have lost food. You might have been uncomfortable. In fact, there's probably many people in our, in our area right now that they don't have any of those comforts. And maybe some are even right now having to go to the local hospitals uh, because of, of a situation of lack of power or lack of uh, air or whatever uh, that case may be. We as people, we as Christians, no matter the circumstances, no matter how bad things may seem, we need to focus on what's important. Now, when we look at the life of Abraham, what situation I thought about, this, thought about when this came up is in Genesis chapter 13. In Genesis chapter 13, we're going to see Abram has continued to be blessed over and over and over again by God. God has been with him. He has helped him. He has blessed him. Uh, Abram is, is becoming even more so a wealthier man than he had been even in days gone past. And so it says that when Abram went up from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him to the south, Abram was a very rich in livestock in silver and in gold. And he went on his journey from the south as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Ai, to the place of the altar which he had made at first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. It says, Lot also who went with him had, had flocks and herds and tents. Now I want us to pause there in our reading because as we look at this, we see that here that Abram's not only being blessed, but now it's something that is, seems to be helping Lot too, at least maybe in some, in some ways. 
But here, Abram and Lot are going to be there together and they're going to have their flocks together and their herdsmen together. And all of these things are seem to be going pretty well, well, up until they're not. It says, now the land was not able to support them. The land was not able to support them that they might dwell together for their possessions were so great that they could not dwell together. And I guess some of them might look at this story and say, well, that's a good problem to have. You know, you're so very well blessed that the land can't hold you, except for the fact that the land can't sustain you. The land land's not sustainable for both of these groups, for both of these family units. This is not going to hold them up. And so that presents a problem. Some might say it's a good problem, but it's still a problem. And so how did the people uh, of Abraham's uh, household uh, and Lot's household, how did they uh, respond? It goes together there in verse seven. It says, and there was strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. The Canaanites and the Perizzites then dwelt in the land. So here we have, there's gonna be strife. There's gonna be frustration. And I think if we're all honest and we examine our lives, I think we've all probably had moments like that. How many of you, you don't, please do not raise your hand, but how many of you in the past day or so, uh, losing power or food got frustrated with your significant other? Got frustrated maybe with how hot it was got frustrated with how much maybe food you lost, got frustrated with, you know, why is the power back on? How many times did you text energy saying my power's out, my power's out, my power's out with no response? Probably happened a lot. But yet we do not look to the negative things of this life. We do not look to those things that might get us down or that might cause us frustration or that might, you know, uh, lead about to even sin. This strife here was growing and growing uh, between these two households. And so Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between you and me and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen for we are brethren. Now that's a lesson I think we all can learn. Not only learn for our individual households, but that we can learn in the Lord's church. Let not strife come between us for we are brethren. And that's a lesson that I think we can learn from the life of Abraham. So what he's going to, uh, to say to him, he says in verse nine, is not uh, the whole land before you? Please separate from me. If you take the left, then I will go to the right. And if you go to the right, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted his eyes and saw all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, like the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as you go toward Zor. Then Lot chose for himself all the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated from each other. And so when you first just read this on kind of just the surface level, you see, okay, Lot made his decision. He made his choice. But when you continue going throughout Genesis and you especially start reading up in the direction he went, he went towards a land that was, yes, very beautiful. Yes, very well supplied. Yes, very fruitful, very well watered, very well able to take care of his herds, take care of his flocks and his people. But he went into a direction that was gonna lead his family into turmoil. He went in a direction that was gonna lead them into just not being on the outskirts of Sodom, but to being inside Sodom itself. And we all know how that turned out for his family. It brought great destruction, not only on the city, but even for his wife and, and even had impacts on his children as well. We see that Abram, that Abram's going to dwell in the land of Canaan. And Lot dwelt in the cities of the plains, pitched his tent even as far as Sodom. But the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. I think Abram in this example today, I think he showed that he needed to focus on what was important. What was important at first was to let them know strife being there in their relationship. No matter what, no matter what lands he got, he did not seem to care. He just wanted to walk with God and he knew God would be with him. And that's something for each of one of us to learn today is that we need to be faithful like Abraham. We need to worship and honor him at all times, at all chances that we get. Revelation chapter two and verse 10, at the end of that verse says, be the faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. That's a blessing we can have in Christ Jesus, that we can have that crown of life. We can be with him forever, but we must be faithful 
We must endure. We must walk by faith. Now, in your bulletin today, you have a typo, uh, and that was me. Uh, I, I, I messed up. And so I think it says Colossians 2 and verse 10. If you look up, you see Revelation 2 and 10, and that's where the mess up came from, okay? But on the screen in front of you, you should say Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2. And in Colossians 3 and verse 2, it reads this. Set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. And that is something that I think just so far in the story today of Abraham that I think we can learn that, that he lived by. He was a person that left his home by faith. He left his home because of obedience to God. And he lived a life out that was stu has stood for generations as an example to us all. He walked by faith. He worshiped to honor God. He teaches us through even negative actions to tell the truth. And we need to see in our life that we always need to choose, choose to do what is of utmost importance, and that is to worship and honor God. So today, if there's anything we can do for you, if there's any prayers you might need, please let us know. Please let the church know and let us as your brethren pray for you, uh, comfort you, be there to support you. If today that you want to put on Christ in baptism, please do not wait any longer. The water is ready. We are ready as well. Please come as we stand and as we sing. There's a mountain
Also, on the first day of the week, the uh, church of our Lord gave up its means. And so what I will do is have a prayer for the giving. Uh, and that will also be the closing prayer. And if you would just leave your your checks or money in the boxes in the back as you, as you exit out. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we've been so richly blessed, Father, particularly spiritually, Father, as we have just noted through the life of your Son. But Father, we truly have been blessed physically too. So Father, help us to show love in our hearts towards you and towards your body here, Father, to help carry the word to the world, Father. We're thankful for everything that we have here, Father, the, the building that we can meet in, Father, the comforts of the building. And we're thankful for our ministers. And, Father, we're thankful for the word that is spread through missionaries that are supported. So, Father, help us to remember these things and help us to give as we've been blessed, Father, and as we've been prospered. Father, as we leave here, help us to have a safe trip home, Father, and help us to once again, some look at this afternoon is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.